well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me here to present today. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Secure uh, Clinical Image Transfer uh, SCIT app. Um, that's a project that's sort of undergoing in Glasgow at the minute. Um, I thought I'd give you a little bit of background about our department. Uh, there we go. For those who don't know where the UK is, this is the UK. This bit Scotland. I actually come from here, which is Northern Ireland, um, England, Wales, and uh, Ireland. So in uh, Glasgow, we're sort of spread over. So we've got um, 10 acute hospital sites in Glasgow. Um, and we have staff over all these different areas. Um, distance from Greenock uh, out to Glasgow is about 35 miles. So small in terms of uh, uh, distance uh, in relation to the US, obviously. Um, so NHS Greater Glasgow Clyde employs 40,000 staff, uh, 55,000 if we include the health and social care partnerships, which is a fairly new thing for us, but we've sort of combined together. As I said, we've got 10 acute hospitals. Uh, that includes a special cancer hospital, a dental hospital, and a pediatric hospital. We also have two ambulatory care hospitals, which are basically like day, day hospitals. Um, as I said, we're integrated now with health and social care partnerships, so we're actually seeing that the work that we produce is actually expanding now um, into other areas that we never serviced before. Uh, we have close links. We're a huge teaching hospital, so we have links with University of Glasgow Medical School as well. In terms of our service, we have 40 staff based uh, across those nine sites. We don't have a uh, member of staff in one of the hospital sites, um, but if required, we'll go out and uh, uh, we'll, we'll send a member of staff out there as and when required. Um, we're divided up into a graphics team, a video technical team, and two photography teams, which are split sort of uh, north and south. In terms of graphics, I think we've got 10 within that team. Uh, video technical, we've got about four. And photography, um, this next slide shows we've got about 20 photographers. I say about because I really should know, but I think it's about that. Um, this is an old slide. Uh, we used to photograph 30,000 uh, patients, and, and it's actually just going up and up and up. So uh, huge volume. And our biggest users, I expect, like most people, are ophthalmology, dermatology, dental, and plastics. And in fact, ophthalmology has just grown and grown for us. And that probably accounts for about 70% now of all our clinical activity. It's huge. And that's mostly OCT. Um, so what is SCIT? What's a SCIT app? So in simple terms, it's a clinical photography tool that enables healthcare providers to capture a clinical image on a smartphone or a tablet, any mobile device. And we go, wow, we don't want that. Um, so basically, on this app, the, the captured image is stored securely on the telephone or the mobile device until it's sent through the network and then into the hospital's image management system. So obviously, there's huge amounts of governance um, around uh, the use of mobile devices in, in medicine. In the UK, uh, the General Medical Council, um, that's their document. It hasn't really embraced mobile technology too much, and it hasn't really been updated for a wee while. So I think they need to be looking at that again. Australia has a really comprehensive document, Clinical Images and the Use of Personal Mobile Devices by the Australian Medical Association. Canada, a similar document. I actually find it difficult to find one for the states. Um, and this was as close as I could get from the Association of Healthcare Information Management Association. Um, and that really is more like a local policy on, on how or, or presents to departments how to um, uh, how to set up in your own local establishment. Um, and obviously, that all relates back to your HIPAA uh, governance there. Um, so why an app? What, what, why were we looking at this? You only have to uh, look on the internet for all these uh, different things that are coming up and around. Doctors are using it. Is it secure, et cetera? Um, there's Medical Defense Association is telling, advising doctors, you know, be careful taking these telephones. Um, and yeah, so it's all over the news, um, uh, intermittently in the UK, uh, as, as well as other places. Um, a recent study of uh, 2,000 doctors across five hospital sites um, said that over a third of them were using uh, web-based messaging apps. So we know it's widespread use. 
And actually what is coming out of the press in the UK is the NHS isn't actually doing enough to actually take advantage of all the tools. We're way behind on where we should be with it, and this is why people are using perhaps some secure methods to try and capture images and to message, etc. Um, and that, that's a, an interesting read that I'm there, actually, if, uh, if you get time. So we also have local policy. Um, and in Scotland, we're quite fortunate that we work closely together with all the other health boards. And uh, now we've got seven out of the 14 health boards signed up uh, to a single document on clinical recording of patients. Um, excuse me, ice. So it presents the best method for taking and managing clinical photographs. Um, however, in saying that, while many hospitals and health departments have implemented in clinical image policies, there's evidence out there, obviously, to suggest that A, they're not aware of it, or they're just completely ignoring it. So why, professional clinical photographer, why on earth would we promote something like this? Obviously, we spend absolutely thousands on cameras, etc. Why would we be promoting it? Well, because I'm getting emails like this in my inbox, probably on a weekly basis now. So if they're coming to me, they're certainly going to our e-health or IT department. Um, so basically, I decided I wanted to be in control of that. Um, it was always going to happen. In fact, it is happening out there. We know, we see evidence of it. Um, so why would we promote it? Because this is a secure system. Um, it integrates with our existing image management software and our clinical portal, which is a sort of uh, mini EPR system. As I say, medical illustration remains in control, and we can also provide training, and we can quality review any images that will be uploaded to the system. So the system that we bought was actually developed in University Hospital Birmingham uh, by Jean Tovey, who's a, a good friend and colleague, um, my equivalent down there. So she worked with an external um, app developer um, to produce the Skit app. Complete full disclosure now, I started this project, and I'm not sure what it's like trying to get anything done in, in healthcare systems over here. It takes forever in the UK. So I started this probably 18 months ago. Um, finally, eHealth approved it uh, in March, and uh, we placed the order, did a tender process, we placed the order uh, basically at the end of March, and we're still very far away from where we need to be. So you'll see a lot of the slides that I'm using today are actually just grabbed from University Hospital Birmingham because that's where it's been introduced. So very simple infrastructure diagram. We have the app. We have the Skit console, the computer that actually controls that. We have MIM, which is our medical image manager healthcare system. And we have PAS, which is our patient administration system. So it all joins together like that. So this is the, the, the welcome page. And as you see, it's, it's a Birmingham site. So uh, users can go and they can log on and they can register for uh, Skip Access. So there is a, quite a rigorous uh, registration process. So again, the registration process, that comes to me as medical image manager to approve. So it all has to be signed off by a clinical director. So doctors can apply, but then a notification would go to a clinical director to say, yes, I, uh, I uh, permit this to be used in, in their clinical area. The app is very straightforward. Um, the first time you log on, you click to agree the terms and conditions. Um, you log on, and that will be logged on through our Active Directory, which is our um, system that um, we've got a sort of single sign-on, so once you log in, it gets you into everything on the computer. Um, obviously, it sends you an alert if uh, there's something else going on there. Um, as I say, the next bit is just add a new patient. You click the green button. You fill in all the patient demographics. Again, this can be customized to whatever you want it to be. Um, this is a very English version. We'll have to Glaswegian it a little bit. Um, and then we'll put in our, our own systems there. Um, and it won't let you get past this bit. If you, if you, fill, if you don't complete these, then it wouldn't let you get past that. Um, patient consent. Um, it's just a yes, no button. Now, this sort of goes away from where we operate as a department. Um, we would normally have three levels of consent. You have for record only. You have level B, which is for record only and teaching and level C, which is record only teaching and publication. 
Um, and there was a lot of debate about this. And obviously, we uh, get written consent as well for the majority of our photography. Um, and it took me a while to sort of get over this, because all you basically do, you have to click a button. You speak to the patient and say yes, and they consent. So Jane, I, I spoke to her, who developed the app, and we were having conversations backwards and forwards. Uh, and she, she turned me around in, in the way that I was thinking. So the use of these mobile devices are only ever for patient record only. Um, the quality isn't good enough, really, for research and publication. Maybe research could be. Um, so that's what we have said it will only be consented for. When it's uploaded into our system, it will be record only. If you wanted to get to use them for research or publication, then you would get further written consent after that. So you would get retrospective consent if you want to do that. So you click Add Photo. You take the photo. Um, you can, at that point, you can actually delete the photograph if it's out of focus or anything like that. Um, or you can say Use Photo. And you can take up to 10 images of, of a patient. And again, that's all customizable as to what you want to do. Um, there's an idiot's guide in case you can't actually take a photograph. Um, and then you can see your view photo, and then you will upload um, the photos, press the upload button. At that stage, it will ask you to verify what we would call the CHI number, the patient ID, um, and you hit that confirm button before you, you proceed. Um, if you're not connected to the Wi-Fi, um, it will, you have to hit save for later. So it does actually use cellular or um, Wi-Fi uh, to be able to connect into the system. So you can save for later, or if you're in a Wi-Fi or 4G enabled, then you can click done and that, then that uploads. At that stage, then you can start again, add a new patient, and you can take other patients. A bit of a techie bit here. Doesn't really mean too much um, to me. But University Hospital Birmingham uh, is a uh, a military hospital, so all our injured um, soldiers, etc., would, would be flown into Birmingham. So therefore, the app was designed for that use as well. So it uses military-grade encryption. Um, once you log in, that gives you a session token. Everything's contained, so your image isn't saved to your camera roll or anything like that. It's all within that app. So you can't get the image off that, so there's no cloud system or anything like that that it's connected into. You can customize, again, the connection time, but most people have it for 10 hours, so you log in in the morning, and that's you logged in for every time you then go back into it. Um, if that token expires, then you would have to re-log in again. Um, techie bit, not sure what that all means, but it just means it's very secure. So basically, if the device is lost or stolen, um, nobody can actually get into the images that are on that app um, without actually logging in. So you would have the security on your telephone to get into it, and you would um, then obviously have the, the security to get into the app itself. I'm just going to show you a little quick video here. Sharing patient images between teams can reduce the time it takes to reach an accurate diagnosis and define an effective treatment plan. But how do you ensure accurate and secure delivery of these images whilst also protecting patient confidentiality? Introducing the Skit app from University Hospital Birmingham the secure and easy way to send clinical images. Here's how it works. One, add in the patient's data and then take the photo with your mobile phone or tablet. Two, send the encrypted image and data directly to your predefined secure location. Three, the relevant clinical team receives notification of the image and opens via their existing image management system or secure portal. And because images are sent to a precise location and not stored on the device or in the cloud, you eliminate the risk of potentially huge fines for non-compliance and clinical governance. What's more, there are a range of implementation options to get you up and running quickly. Skit, the secure and headache-free way to send clinical images. Okay, so what I should also say is that um, this was designed uh, for use on personal mobile devices. Um, and certainly in some health boards uh, and trusts in the UK, they will allow people to use uh, personal mobile devices. In Scotland, the decision has been that you're not allowed to use mobile devices. Um, that's in our local policy. Um, so what we're saying is if you want access to the app, then you have to uh, buy a device um, that, that is uh, 
NHS owned, if you like, or, or trust owned. So um, the, the thought behind letting anybody use it on their personal mobile devices is really because they're likely to have a more up-to-date phone, better camera, et cetera, than probably the hospital devices that, that we'll issue. So we're sort of still in negotiation. As I say, the system isn't actually in yet, but we've done some tests with iPods, actually, and you can get nice uh, sort of Fisher-Price type covers on it so and a docking station, so they would all be docked, for example, in the ED or something like that to do it. So, so where do the images go then once uh, it's been captured on the phone? So this is our system that we use, Medical Image Manager. Uh, and I thought I'd just show you a, a couple of screen grabs from that. Um, no. So you log into the system. Um, so it's, uh, you can search by patient, you can search by image, or you can actually search by job. Um, so this is the system that we probably use quite um, more so probably than our clinicians. Our clinicians would tend to just log directly into the portal, and I'll show you that in a wee second. Um, so a young Cathy. Um, so this is how you, if you do a search on patient images, it will come up with that, and it will show you the thumbnails. Um, you can then click in, and that gives you the more fuller information, um, and there's Zoomify and other uh, uh, things that you can do once you're into that system. It's got really really basic image editing tools in it. We'll take mirror, flip, crop, color balance. It's actually really clumsy. Um, it's, it's not the best system in the world. Um, so our photographers probably do take it into Photoshop and lift the image a little bit before we actually put it into um, Medical Image Manager. So this is the clinical portal that I was uh, telling you about. Um, so this is basically where all the, the patient data goes, and then it links out into other uh, systems. Um, and Medical Image Manager is one of them. So this is my healthcare record on a test system. And you can get your lab results, et cetera, hematology, mi microbiology, et cetera. This was a test system. Um, so here, normally, you would see one which would say imaging. And you would see a little camera in the top right-hand corner. And then when you actually go into that system, you'll hit imaging and the, the bit of medical image manager appears within that portal. And as I say, probably 90% of our clinician activity is they would log in through that way. If you want to, you can click on the image and you could open up into medical image manager. Uh, there is a warning then because rather than you just seeing that individual patient, that opens up medical image manager and you can actually see you would have access to every category that you um, were, were allowed to. Just a little bit about the, the console, and I suppose it's about us keeping control of this. Um, so an application would come to me, I approve or, or refer back if, if something's not completed, and we can actually see the whole audit trail within that console of who's accessed um, and, and who's going into the system, how many images are they taken or whatever. So here you can see you can reject or accept. Um, and you can run a whole lot of reports from the system as well. So it really is keeping control um, in us. I, my thoughts were either we do it or somebody else, uh, most likely IT, are going to do it, and then we lose control out of it um, completely. There are limitations to the Skit app. Um, it doesn't really support text messaging. Video capability isn't there just at the minute, um, though they are doing that in the next build. I would love to hear uh, how any of you deal with your video storage um, issues because it's, it's just a nightmare in Greater Glasgow and Clyde. And we actually don't have a really good way of storing the video because of the file sizes, et cetera. And it's not really, truly real time. Um, you have to be into the hospital system if you want to see the images. Um, and I'm not sure that that's really what the doctors want. If you're in the ED, you may just want to snap across the images. So they may still use WhatsApp or something like that. Um, to do it, but it, it's at least a, a start, and I'm sure as, as the builds go on, we'll probably address some of these issue, issues. Um, so approval was granted, as I said, for app in March 2018. The infrastructure and everything is in place from the e-health point of view. What we have now is two conflicting um, suppliers, because we've got Medical Image Manager, who have to do some work to allow the integration of the app. And they're fighting with each other, and it's all a bit political at the minute. So uh, <laughs> that's sort of delaying things for us uh, as well. Though I have looked at a couple of emails, and um, I can see that there's been a bit of movement on that. Um, so yeah, it's exciting times. Uh, do I think it's a threat to us? No, I don't. As I showed you before, our clinical activity is increasing uh, year on year. I think we had a 
23% increase in 2017-18, no, 16-17, and we had another 13% increase in our patient activity 17-18. Um, so I don't think this is going to take away from it. I think what it gives us is uh, we can now go to doctors and say, actually, you can't be using your own mobile phone. We have a system in place, and that actually allows us to tackle it. So if you want to take photographs, then you use the system that we put in place for it. Um, it has been funded by ourselves, Medical Illustration. Um, and again, that's a, just because uh, I wanted to keep control of it. Uh, and we, we need to look, because at the, the minute we've got, probably got 100 registered cameras out there. So we have a lot of people who do DIY photography. We're not a 24-hour service. Um, so people have their own cameras in theatres, etc. if we can't actually get to theatre. So they're already registered, and, and those are out there. And the idea is to phase those out um, over time. So I'm not going to do a big bang launch with it either. I don't want everybody suddenly to say, yeah, I've got an app and start going through. So there will be an application process, uh, and we'll do a pilot with dermatology, ED, and podiatry. Um, where it really will help us is uh, out of the community. We have a lot, we, we're now integrated with health and social care. We have a podiatrist, I think, alone have got probably 25 of our cameras that are, are registered out there. So we're continually uploading. So um, I suppose the difference is with the cameras, we get the images in and then we upload so we can quality check there. Um, with the app, they've got to go straight in. Um, so we'll have to keep a close eye on it, I suppose, and that's why we want to start off small and then roll it out over time. That's me. Yep.